think it's all about you well, what about me think it's all about you well, what about me Out, but ain't nobody really hearing me Sometimes I think it's all just a conspiracy But I'm still living fearlessly Even in this age of tyranny I spit another stanza in the face of propaganda With my face up in the camera Full picture panorama These days things are not what they appear to be Post another selfie on the gram Acting cheerfully behind closed doors You want all Welcome guys, welcome to the dark side of entrepreneurship Where we shed light on unique challenges and triumphs, balancing business and love. I'm your host, Jason, and today we are embarking on a journey to uncover the secrets of creating content while staying married. This is the first time actually I'm doing a duo interview, like interviewing two people at the same time. And I'm so glad uh, Phyllis, uh, my lovely Phyllis, has agreed, uh, you know, along with Neil, uh, to do this so I'm, I'm really fascinated i'm really happy i'm really glad that you know we are doing this now now picture this guys you know you're navigating in the ever-evolving landscape of content creation and we all suck at it at some point and all while nurturing a strong and healthy marriage so imagine your couples you're both into the entrepreneurial game and you're trying to also create content at the same time and keeping a healthy marriage it's a delicate dance right but fear not uh, we are all here to explore how couples like Neil and Phyllis defy the odds and thrive in both realms. In this episode, we will deep dive into joys and struggles of blending love, work, from setting boundaries to leveraging each other's strength. Join as we laugh and learn, uncover practical insights on communication, time management, and the art of staying connected. Uh, while creating content that resonate uh, with audience worldwide. So grab your favorite beverage of your choice. At this moment of time, I'm sipping on water. Uh, you can have coffee, alcohol, whatever you feel like. Cozy up if you're couples. Get ready to get a dose of inspiration as we embark on this delightful journey into the heart of content creation and matrimony. So welcome, you know, welcome Neil and Phyllis to my podcast. And I will allow... Leslie, Leslie, if you don't mind, would you would you do a guest introduction, please? Leslie, are you there? Please unmute if you're available. Yes, I've been having issues with this. Okay, here we go. Hold on one minute as I walk away. <laughs> All right, so guest away from the, the, yeah, everybody. So, all right, here we are. Uh, meet Neil and Phyllis Strawdor, a dynamic duo prowess with brand expertise. Neil's journey began in 2008 when his barbecue business caught the attention of the LA Times. This led to TV appearances on shows like Barbecue Pitmasters and commercials for brands Fresh and Easy and Cabo Wabo Tequila. Returning to Galveston, Texas in 2022, Neil ventured into voice acting, founding Hospital Hospitable Vox, where his soothing voice has graced ads from Home Depot, Target, and more. Meanwhile, Phyllis, a.k.a. the ghetto country grandmother, transformed her kitchen table food business into a multi-million dollar empire. Now, in the HBIC of Brandma's House, she guides entrepreneurs to brand success with her podcast and book, Balance is bullshit. Together, Neil and Phyllis exemplify the power of collaboration and creativity in both business and marriage. Please welcome the very awesome Neil and Phyllis. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Thank you so much, Leslie, for helping me with the guest introduction. I, I I should first say Neil has a really sexy voice. I have to say this. 
really okay. sexy voice. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was still over here dancing to your music when you entered. <laughs> so, so let's let's actually get in you know, a deep dive into this episode. I'm I'm really interested in knowing. Uh, okay, both of you guys. My first question is: I w- I would like you to share your story on how you two first met and what initially <laughs> drew you to each other. I I want Neil to. share his side of the story and then hear from Phyllis. Okay. Well, we met on believe it or not on an internet site called Black Planet. And we were both we were both there. We we spent a lot of time talking on there. Um and we just decided one day we were going to I invited her over for dinner. and i cooked for her and we had an evening and from <laughs> there <laughs> i'm sorry i'm laughing at you trying to keep the clean version but go ahead okay. no, i'm going to let you tell that version <laughs> we um we just started um spending time together yeah cuz it wasn't dating no it, it wasn't dating no we spent time together and we kind of grew from there and um Phyllis I'm going to let you jump in here what man you told you told the 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 kid friendly version um what Neil is trying not to say is that we slept together on the first date if you want to call it a date <laughs> <laughs> you're the man Neil. I, I just wanted you to be the one to say that <laughs> i you know i am very transparent it's like yes. You know it ain't no point in tiptoeing around it. People do what they do. Yeah. But it ends up being a 20 year marriage, so I ain't got no shame in it. Yeah. When we started, we neither one of us were looking for a relationship. She called me her medicinal man. Yep. Interesting. So, Why is that? Why medicinal man? <laughs> Cuz I was there to to soothe her, to, to feel her needs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um yeah, Neil as Neil said, I told him he was just something to do. And because we both had practice what well, we call our practice marriages. Mine lasted 5 years, Neil's lasted as he says not long enough for God to get the word. <laughs> <laughs> But I was uh, I wasn't married long enough to get a sink on my side of the bed. Yeah. But so when we when we finally met or hooked up um it was just it was just something to do i wasn't we weren't trying to stay together we weren't even trying to be together we were just trying to do some things and move on but it just worked out the way that it worked out yeah so yes i would call him when i needed to be physically medicated put it that way <laughs> <laughs> that's so that's so cool yeah. was there anything interesting which you really liked apart from the medications which you are getting regularly <laughs> you know what? I cannot say cuz seriously in all I mean seriously. Neil had and that's what I was telling you earlier before we came on. Neil had two other women when I met him, so I wasn't trying to it was nothing serious. It was just something to do. Uh yeah. so there was nothing really special about him other than we had that site that we were on. We had came friends and then we just crossed over into friends with Benny's that's what it yeah. ended up being but we became really good friends before we did anything because we told each other everything we shared everything i'm like dude i don't give a flying fig about him so it's right. just it is what it is so there was nothing special until there needed to be something special yeah when she, and she finally told me hey look um you're about to tell a lie aren't you i don't know what lie you talking about she told me she hit me in the back of the head and said hey you need to get rid of them other women that lie <laughs> you know that's what you did but jason take control take control cuz yeah, we yeah. argue over this yeah. lie we no, still a... argue over this lie after 20 years <laughs> that's all right that's all right i'm i'm interested in knowing at at what point neil you felt like okay i have this connection and i would like to get committed to phyllis it's when i realized that um she was the one that gave me the least amount of drama 
it's so romantical. Yeah, it it was true though. It was true. She she was she wasn't jealous. She just enjoyed spending time with me. I enjoyed spending time with her. Uh, she pretended to have some of the same interests as me. What did I pretend? You pretended like you like like going to the concerts. And I did like going to the concerts with you, but after twenty years, I don't want to go no more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I did I'm, like yeah. yeah. I'm I'm really glad you know you you guys you know had that connection and you know I I I, I would I totally a- a- agree uh, that Phyllis uh, does not give a shit like you know she does her own thing I I totally agree I have felt that vibe always that's what's so magnetic about Phyllis and she does not care about other people's opinion also she just likes doing her stuff so yes definitely I totally agree you know that's, that's a, right yeah that's a really cool thing which which attracts people. Uh, like myself and many others listening to this show, to Phyllis. So, yeah. so now let's actually move ahead. You know, I want to ask you more questions. You know, we want to deep dive okay. into the content creation side also. So, so what were some maybe pivotal moments in your relationship that kind of solidified the bond and strengthened your love apart from what you have shared already? Um, we. We dated for a while. We 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 finally we enjoyed um, spending time together. And at some point, Phyllis again slapped me in the back of the head and told me we should move in together because that's what her mama told her. And so we ended up moving in together. And we lived together for a while. And at the time, we were going to church, and our pastor told us, hey, it's not cool what you guys, he, he thought we were married. And he said, it's not cool what you guys um, just living together, you should get married. So we decided, okay, we should get married. So we packed up, um, Phyllis was was technically still married. So she went down and she finally, finally got her divorce finalized on a Wednesday. Friday, we went by the church and say, hey, ask the pastor, hey, what are you doing? He said, oh, nothing. So we grabbed him and some of our friends and we went over to the park and they married us in a gazebo. And then we went to the Mongolian place. They had Mongolian barbecue. That's such a cool story. So, you so Wednesday what? you got divorced <laughs> and Friday you got married again. Yep. Yep. But the trick part is his version of this story. But I'm gonna leave it alone. What did I? What What did I lie about? Did I say you lied? Just your your. I, is there something you know, that I left out? We are so not doing this today. We trying to stay married today. We are trying to stay. We, we are trying that, to stay married today. That's every day we're always just <laughs> trying to stay married today. I'm sure these folks didn't come to hear us argue. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah, your version? You know, I'm, I'm just curious. What's your version, Phyllis? Let's hear it. My version mm-hmm. um, of how we ended up together. Yes, of course. Um, <clears throat> Neil started catch. I started catching vibes for Neil, but he started before I did because uh, while we were still just in a messing around mode, I went to Jamaica with some friends, and I didn't tell him because I didn't owe him no explanation. We weren't serious, and he still had his two other chicks while I was gone, and he kept blowing up my phone. Where you at? Why are you not calling me back? What's going on? Are you okay? And did you forget that part, Neil? No, not at all. Okay, just checking. <laughs> oh. I didn't think it was pertinent to the story. Oh, you didn't? No. <laughs> but then by the time I got back, and like I said, we had moved past the point of just sleeping together. And he was taking me around his family. I was taking him around mine. Um, and so like back then, we used to call it the vapors. I started catching the vapors for dude. Mm-hmm. But I still knew those other two women were around. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to let you be and do your thing <clears throat> and and not be bothered. And he all Neil told me was wait. He never told me anything else. And But for some reason, I knew after a while that those two women are gone. There was no head slapping. No, there was no telling him to leave them chicks alone. It was just him saying, wait, I did. And he never had to explain himself. And because we had built up so much trust just in the fucking around stage, it was it was an easy transition. That's so cool, Neil. I'm I'm glad that you left these 
two women and he finally decided to <laughs> go ahead I with it. <laughs> yeah. I am too. Yeah, let's try. Best decision of my life. Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate and I really admire you for doing that. Now, you know, let's let's uh, you know hear about your barbecue business. So, at what point did you guys get into the barbecue business? Was it after getting married or were you already uh, venturing or doing that? Give me give us a little back story if you can. Were we married when we started? Nope. You started watching Alton Brown and you joined the brethren, but it was when we moved up to the two bedroom. Okay. Yeah. We were, we were living together. And, um, as she said, I was watching, um, Alton Brown good eats and I saw him barbecue a pork butt in a flower pot. And I said, if he can do that, I ought to be able to learn how to barbecue. So I started learning and training and, all this stuff. And I eventually I got to the point where I wanted to do a competition. So I did, I could put together a team and call 4Q and we went out and did competitions and, and had a little success at that. So we did more competitions. And at some point Phyllis said, Hey, homeboy, um, your competitions are cutting into my shoe money. So <laughs> you need to start selling some of this food that you cook it. So we started selling um, lunch plates at her job and at my job and anybody else that we could find. And that's what we were doing, doing some catering and things like that. And then Phyllis came up with the bright idea of, yeah, hey, you know what? Bad. Maybe we should go sell at the farmer's market. And me being who I am, I just said, okay. You are such a... Mm. And that is what happened. So we we put together our trailer and we went and started selling at, at a farmer's market. And we got a good review from one of the editors at the LA Times. And it just started blowing up. We started getting all these calls and everybody wants to come and cook at their farmer's market. So we were cooking at six farmer's markets a week in LA. Um, and that just became our business. And we did that for, was it like six years before we decided? Five, uh, five years before we uh, opened a brick and mortar? Mm-hmm. Yep. And then that's when we yeah. opened. Because if Big you guys Mr. know anything about, I'm sorry, baby, finish what you're saying. No, no, I'm just saying that's when we started Big Mrs. Barbecue. Yeah. But if you guys know anything about the restaurant industry, when you go to your favorite restaurant, especially if you're an entrepreneur who takes like visits places, visit places during the slow time. What always scared me about the restaurant business is that those, those non-peak hours. When you drive by your favorite restaurant, it wasn't nobody in there but the staff. And so opening a restaurant was very scary uh, for me. And although, like, yes, Neil should be cooking for a living, but Neil don't want to cook for a living. <laughs> but we lasted for 10 years in doing that. But it was that was the biggest fear. And then we turned around and we were supposed to open a restaurant downtown L.A. We got we got enticed by someone who said they were going to help us out and they were going to do the build out and all this kind of stuff. And by this time, we're like 20 grand deep into this build out, finding out dude is all of a sudden backing out of all the shit he was going to say. I mean, of what he was going to do. And he's telling us now we have to pay these bills. And it's like, you don't lost your fucking mind. I'm not paying this. Mm -hmm. And we had to walk away from a $20,000 investment. And everybody wanted to be mad at us. And mind you, like I said, we were getting all kind of press and PR. And people were saying that we were going to be in downtown LA. Big Mr. is coming downtown. And but when we walked away, everybody's like, wait, what the hell happened? And Neil and I are not the type to throw people under the bus. So we didn't throw Homeboy under the bus. But mind you, he was one of the market managers of, of one of the farmer's markets that we were doing. And he approached us as like, we want you guys to come. We're doing this thing. And we want you guys to be one of the premier restaurants. And we said, okay. So to our understanding and our verbal agreement, that's why y'all get shit in writing. Mm -hmm. Our verbal agreement was shit. And because back then we were still learning the business, we got screwed. Yep. Big time. So at, at that uh, moment of time, I, I wanted to ask you, Phyllis, that were you, mm -hmm. uh, were you working somewhere else? Is that how you were able to? Yes. Um, before I before I quit my job, for, before Neil quit his job, Neil was an investment banker. Um, so he had, y'all, he has a brain. He really does. But he was an investment banker. He actually got a job that I couldn't get. Mind you, I'm a numbers person and I have a degree in personal finance. But they wouldn't hire me, but they hired him. That's how that went. 
But and then I also had a government job at that time. So I was still working um, as we built this, but we didn't go all in until this was much later. Because like I say, I think for the first year and a half is when we did the farmers markets and all of that kind of thing. And we were all up and through L.A. And it wasn't until like after that, what was was that five years in, baby? Because Morgan was two when I quit my job. Yeah. And so we had already been married for three years because that chick decided to come on our anniversary. So now it's our birth anniversary. But yeah, so we had already been doing this for like five years before um, I even got a chance to quit my job. But Neil quit his job as soon as we finished the first farmer's market. We started in November trying to sell barbecue in Watts. If y'all know anything, it's enough flavor in Watts that <laughs> we were not doing good yeah. trying to sell some barbecue in that neighborhood. Yeah. But by February of that following year, because of the press that we got in the LA Times, we were in six markets. Neil quit his job, and it just bloomed from there. So, at, at what point, uh, you know, did you? What made you guys? I kind of know the backstory because I've interviewed Phyllis so many times, so I kind of remember. <laughs> okay, but I would like to hear your version also, Neil. At what point, you know, you guys made up your mind that you know we're gonna shut this barbecue thing, whole thing down, and uh, we will try something else. And what made you like you, you know, Phyllis, you moving to personal branding and and Neil, you, you know, getting into audio branding. So what made you made that choice and pivot? Uh, well, first off, Phyllis quit. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you know, we had the two restaurants going and Phyllis said she was tired of it and she she quit and she started doing her own thing. Um, and then eventually she said she wanted to, to write. And she said she wanted, she was tired of, we were, both of us were tired of Long Beach because it was so expensive. And, um, we really, we had reached a point to where we were struggling because prices kept going up and we were trying not to raise our prices, but trying to keep everybody paid. And, you know, when you're running a business, you get paid last. So we um we decided we were gonna pack it in and we ended, we closed one and then we ended up closing the other one. And Phil, like I said, Phyllis said she wanted to write. So we packed up and sold our house and we moved up to Oregon so Phyllis could do her thing because my 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 thought on it was we had chased my dream for 10 years. It was her turn to do what she wanted to do. So I was just gonna support her and whatever it was that she wanted to do. That's, that's so cool. I'm so glad, uh, you know, you gave Phyllis the opportunity to pursue her dreams. But uh, yeah. uh, why didn't you partner up with her and uh, decided to do like a joint venture? <laughs> why go separate because ways? Had, because one, because I had no idea what the hell she was doing. <laughs> uh, and if you look at it, she also didn't have any idea getting into the restaurant business, you know? It's just she was. Yep. Yep. And we learned from that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we learned that I'm gonna let her do her thing. If she needs me, she can call on me. But I'm gonna stay out of the way and let her do her thing. I'm gonna do everything I can to make her job easier. That is awesome. So, okay, so let's just deep dive into some of the challenges. So now you were trying to build your hospitable walks business, you know. Oh no, that came later. That came much later. Oh, that came much later. So, okay. So Neil's what, been working. In, Neil's thing when when I finally. Um, like after I quit, one of the things about Neil and that we know about each other, I'm a paper pusher. And so people don't realize how much paper you have to push when you're running a restaurant. People want to bitch about prices and all of that kind of stuff. And they don't know how much stuff goes on behind the scene. I was fine with Neil being the face and the schmoozer and the media whore and all of that kind of stuff. But behind the scenes, it's like there's still all these numbers to be balanced. And people think that being <clears throat> generating millions in revenue is an easy thing. It's not when you have to pay out and you have to make sure insurance is covered. You have to pay yeah. rent on two different places. You have to, cause <clears throat> I think baby, weren't we on our way to opening a third restaurant? No. Weren't we talking about the third concept when we was going to do big Mr. Southern something or whatever, Southern smoke or something like that. That was, that, that was just talk. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the thing. Because we, we, we love hospitality, love hospitality. Mm. 
entertaining people, having fun, but behind all of that is business. And so a lot of the hard lessons that I learned in branding and marketing came at the expense of big misters. And it was the challenge of, of when I tell you, you heard me say this before, uh, Jason, when Neil was going to bed with Mrs. Mister more than he was going to bed with Phyllis because I was always on. And I was always making sure it's like, okay, we made this money. Now we need to make more money because as quickly as you make it, if you don't sure up your shit, your processes and all that kind of stuff, as quickly as you make it is as quickly as it goes because you're constantly putting out fires instead of doing fire prevention. And Cass talks about this when she talks about process processes and policies and all that other stuff. And so a lot of times we were putting out fires and it's just like we would get great press and we have lines down the street and around the corner. And that's not how we wanted to build our business. And so we would get this ebb and flow of all of these folks wanting a piece of us. And it's like, this shit is, I, I don't want this. And, and it's, go ahead, one, I just want to say one of the things that, that, that messed me up is <laughs> I did this. I did it because I wanted to cook. And once the business is up and running and, and, and all this going, I never got to cook. I was, you know, we, like she said, we was always inventory and dealing with employees and the insurance and the health department and stuff. I never got to do what I got into the business to do. So that was one of the reasons I was. You was glad I was, when I quit, weren't you? I was fine letting me <laughs> <laughs> but the the thing about it is and like even now we're in texas now we left california moved to oregon and now we're in texas and mm-hmm. even here because now he he does hospitality he does voiceover and i do what i do now but people still see us as big mr and mrs mr and they keep asking are y'all going to open a restaurant bitch i'm 57 i don't want to stand on my feet all day i'm mm-hmm. not doing it but people still see us in that light. And this is why I'm so adamant when I talk about separating your personal life from your personal brand, because some people just won't let it go. Yep. That's not what we do anymore. That's not who we are. I'm Neil, uh, that's Neil and I'm Phyllis. Can I have a name, please? Yeah. Absol- okay, ab- absolutely. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. I'm, I'm really glad that, you know, we're exploring uh, this conversation, trying to understand what really happened back then. So yeah. as you transitioned uh, because i know you didn't write the book immediately because it just was recently launched right we discussed about this last year so you got into personal branding you're trying to upskill yourself with personal branding and neil on the other hand eventually moved to uh, <laughs> the hospitable walks uh, wherein he does voiceover and other things so did you guys i wrote a couple of, we wrote a couple of cookbooks before then but oh interesting so mm-hmm. so you oh, so hold on hold on Jason hold on ask him what's the the original name of his first book oh, what him. was the original name of the first book Secret Recipes to Get You Laid <laughs> <laughs> So Neil you know it, it it sounds like you know cooking is a big part of of your life then why voiceover like you know it just looks it just sounds incompatible to what you're passionate about right so why stick around I'm tired man ah. i was tired i cook for family for me. i cook for family i cook for phyllis and i cook for our daughter that is lovely I'm really, I'm, glad. I'm, I'm really glad that you kept the passion going on within your family so that is super cool so and the thing about that is i can cook something different all the time instead of having to cook the same thing every day as you would in a restaurant. I get to experiment all the time and I I, I do videos um, with a lot of my cooking. I have a lot of cooking videos up. So that's so why I get to share with people what I'm cooking. That is really nice. That is really dope. So, so at this moment of time, if I ask you, what kind of content are you specifically creating at your end? Um, just for, and for me, it's, it's the cooking videos and I also, I do, um, like I say, I do the voice acting. So I have a lot, I put out a lot of content showing my skills as a voice actor. Um, cause you have to stay out, stay in front of people to, in order to get jobs. Um, but I, like I say, I also do my cooking videos. Um, that's a lot of the content that I do. 
Um, I'm starting a new series. It's called Grubs and Grooves, where I Drop just S. huh Grub and Grooves. That's right. Thank you. We, and um, it's just me cooking with 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 music that I like, um, which is another big love of mine. So I just find tunes that I like, and I just cook. I don't know. I don't even talk in them. Um, it's just the music and the cooking, sharing what I love. So, so Phyllis, uh, you know, on one side is primarily focused on personal brand. She throws a lot of stuff on LinkedIn, okay, uh -huh. which really uh, hurts people, you know, badly. <laughs> 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 and and you on the other hand, you know, you are into cooking videos, grubs and groups. I have no idea what that means, but you know, that's a cool title. <laughs> Just okay. food and music. Oh, food and music. Okay, okay. That's right. another way of saying it. So that's also really cool. Yeah. Did you yeah. did you guys run into trouble like with one another because you're trying to do something separately and she's trying to do something separately? Did you have oh, conflicts no. and fight? How, how did the whole content creation, like the whole creative process works among both of you? Because both he of you are entrepreneurs. He don't listen to me. The thing, the thing with, because first and foremost, when I, when, um, when I quit the restaurant and Neil decided that he was going to quit with me, um, at that point, Neil decided he wanted to be a trophy husband. And I was not mad about that, yes. which means that I was going to step up and take care of him, which I do not have a problem with. So because outside of cooking, because like before cooking, Neil's first love was computers. That was way long. That was his first girlfriend. But that was a long time ago. But after we gave up the restaurant, Dude didn't know what he wanted to do, what he wanted to do. And I'm like, I got you. I don't mm -hmm. care what you do. As long as you love what you do. I have found what I loved by by way of Big Mister. So it was a blessing, even though it was some hard ass shit and some hard ass lessons. Big Mister's barbecue is what got me here. And it was that part of, you know what, dude, go figure it out. And I, I don't even know if Neil is still figuring out all, all he really wants to do. You know what? Put me in the front of a camera and let me cook. If I could afford a camera crew for him, that would be all he would do. And I'm cool with that. That's so, not true. What would you do, baby? Oh, I'm sorry. Travel. You have to have a traveling team. I'm sorry. I forgot. No. We got to get you on the road. I want to travel and eat. That's what I want to do. That's, that's it. And so it's it's that part of, of him being able to figure stuff out. Because people think you figure shit out. Like, oh, I finished college. I'm gonna go get a job. I got it all together. Oh, I'm hitting 40. I didn't figure it out. I got all, I got it all together. Sweetie, when you're still transitioning and you're still ciphering and you're still figuring things out, you do what you want to do. As long as you're making some money to support your bills, sweetie, figure shit out for yourself. And it's sad that, well, not sad, but I never thought I would still be turning corners after 50. I promise you, I thought I would have a job that I would retire from and all of those type of things. Neil and I still aren't settled. We're not staying in Texas. Yeah. And so getting to this whole content creation thing, it was like the, the, the just trying to stay married podcast that came about because Neil wrote his second, the book that I have, well, y'all can't see the book behind me, but his spice is a variety of life. I said, baby, we need to promote your book. And you don't listen to me when I talk about brand and marketing. So we got to find some other way to do it. So this is no different than me talking about doing the, the barbecue thing. So now it's like, you know, I'll help you out here. But I make it very clear in that <clears throat> in that arena, I'm Neil's wife. I'm not the yeah. ghetto country grandmother. Nope. You don't Fox, really, yeah. Foxy Brown. I'm Foxy Brown. But yeah. I'm this Foxy Brown. Stop it. But nobody else gets to call me Foxy Brown. You don't even get to play with that name because that's reserved for Neil's wife not for anybody else to be playing with. So don't come up here saying my personal brand is Foxy Brown. It is not. That is Neil's wife that you hear on the podcast. Yeah. So when <clears throat> being able to create that content with him and like he's fully responsible for that. Dude, you're going to produce it. You're going to edit it. You're going to put out the clips. I ain't doing shit. Uh -huh. You just talk. I just talk. I show up and I, I'll be cute for you, baby. That's all I need to do. Yes, you do. Uh huh. And so he does. <laughs> <laughs> but it's with that understanding. I don't want to. I don't. Technically, I don't want to be in business with my husband anymore. Because one, he don't listen to me. I listen to everything you say. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with Neil. 
That you are list- so foolish. You're dancing. No, seriously. <laughs> come on. No. Nina has been you. listening yeah. to you all okay. this time. Go ahead. Like, go ahead. Y'all may gang up on me. Come on. I'm listening. Mm. Neil, I, 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 listen, I, don't always, I don't always act on what you say. Oh, you're going to make that but distinction. I, but I listen. <laughs> <laughs> I listen. What were you going to say, Jason? I'm saying that, he, yeah, he definitely listens. I have not even heard him once utter a single word and say, yeah, that's not right. Uh, you know, Phyllis, you're wrong. He's just quiet. He's just accepting whatever you're saying. He's just calm and composed. Uh, no wonder he decided know, that, not to work together. <laughs> you know what? Um, that's a big part of our marriage. I don't say no a lot. We have We have a lot of whatever in our marriage. You, you you did this okay whatever <laughs> and, <laughs> and it, it bugs it used to bug Phyllis. it doesn't bug her anymore but i'd say my piece and then i'm done with whatever it is and i still want to be mad <laughs> she still wants to be mad she wants to hold a grudge and i say i ask her are you are you mad at me still and she says yeah i'm still mad at you i say okay let me know when you're done i'm gonna go watch tv <laughs> <laughs> that's how our relationship works so I, I'm so done with it. So this is really cool. Okay, so so let me understand this. So, <laughs> is there a point wherein you guys would sit together and just brainstorm on some ideas, like you know how would how to diversify uh, your content, or maybe change strategies, or maybe you know try something new, fresh, or do you guys just go independent and just do your own thing as you desire, as you like? Um, separate from the podcast, we do our own thing. The podcast we talk about, um, and with that, you can't even get it general, out you. Generally, we just well, we have a list of topics. We don't have anything scripted. We don't have a list of questions or anything. We start with the topic, and we just go. We have conversations. This is how we normally talk. These are our conversations. All the giggling and the stupid remarks and. <laughs> And all that kind of stuff. That's just how we talk to each other. And we're just sharing that. We, we just pick a topic and we talk about how we feel about that topic. And that's how we flow. Is that how you get ideas, Phyllis, to piss people off on LinkedIn? Um, do I just flow? <laughs> um, partially, yes. Because the thing about it is like there's something that hits me. And depending on where I am or how I am, um, I'll send myself an email like this is what I want to post about tomorrow because something struck my interest and I'll try and type out as much as I can because I am 57 and shit just comes in my head and it goes away. But in doing content with Neil, yes, I had to sit down and I'm y'all, we came up with like 20 some topics. It got on my freaking nerves. <laughs> but and here's the other thing that a lot of people think. Neil and I don't agree on half the shit that we talk about or the half the shit that we do. We can't even agree on a fucking font. So you know what we do? One of us said, you know what? Do what you want. Okay. I ain't going to fuss about it. I ain't going to be mad about it. If that's the font you want, if that's the color you want, I'm going to roll with it. Yeah. Now, Neil will try and say, well, baby, what do you want? I do not give a flying pig. I don't want shit except to be left alone. And yeah. so, you know, it's it's not even so much the whatever man. It's like, you know what? Do what you want to do. I'm not mad. And we're not. People will try and, and hold grudges and all of this kind of stuff. Well, we need to do it this way. We did it your way last time. I do not care. Mm, we are so good at letting go. <laughs> Would you say that, yeah. that that's what's making your relationship or your marriage strong? Because it's easy to let go and not have any hate or anything in your mind about one another? Well, Would the, thing, you the a decision that we made is... The marriage always comes first. Yes. No matter if we have to to stop our businesses altogether, the marriages always come first. So, um, and when we have that in mind, you know, at that point, you say, "Okay, is this worth, you know, ruining my marriage over? Am I going to start a fight? Is this going to bring us strife? And if it's not worth it, just let it go." And that's a big part of our, our podcast. Yeah. Is we we just try to stay married today, not this year, not no. tomorrow. We're gonna just try to stay married today. We always we, we uh, the I, I came up with a tagline the other day. It's a short term look at a long terms at a long term relationship. 
all we do is just try to stay married today. And that's how yeah. we go every day. I'm just going to try to stay married today. And that's then it started. It actually started in the restaurant because one of the things that um, one of the things that, like I say, Neil and I get on each other's nerves. We know this. Neil Neil is the one he does the cooking, he does the grocery shopping, he cleans the kitchen most of the time and all that kind of stuff. But in all of his mess cuz he is a messy ass cook y'all, in all his mess he could have bitches on every surface in the fucking kitchen. And all he sees is the cereal bowl I left out. You going to come get your bowl? Are you fucking kidding me? So, when we took some of that nonsense in the restaurant, what well, we would tell our staff is, baby, can you go watch this knife so I can stay married today? And they'll yeah. say, well, you go get that so I can stay married today. And we included our staff in it. And they 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 would say, you know, what? we don't like when the parents fight. So they would make sure they <laughs> jump us out so we could stay married today. Because mm-hmm. it can get really ugly really quick because you bring your home drama into your business. And then you take your business drama home with you. And that blurry ass line, it's like, oh, are we, we are skirting divorce right here. Because you are getting on my last year's nerve. We've been together 24-7 and our daughter was homeschooled. So that chick was sitting right there. We were never apart. So trying to stay married day to day was the best we could do. It is not easy, especially, and mind you, we started all of our shit late. We didn't buy our first home until, what, Morgan was two? No, we bought our first home when Morgan was six months. But mind you, I didn't have Morgan until I was 42. So that shit came late. I didn't mm-hmm. quit my job until I was like 43, 44. So we're starting all of this shit over in our 40s and still trying to stay married after having bad marriages already. <clears throat> so when it so the content that we create on just trying to stay married, sweetie, we're not telling you how your marriage works. We're telling you the funky ass shit we go through day to day. Yeah. And like sometimes Neil, Neil wants to kind of guide the conversation. I'm like, dude, can we just talk? Let's talk like we yeah. normally talk. Let's yeah. not script this shit. Yep, I just I, I left it out. I just I, I might have a few points that I want to touch on, and but outside of that, we just roll. And and that and that is really how we stay married. I'm a roll with it. If yeah. you want, I tell people think it's crazy, and I, well, women, some women think it's crazy because I tell them Neil's the man of the house, and they don't understand what that means because people think that being submissive and all this other shit is like I'm bowing down. No, I respect him as the man of the house. Because I promise y'all, if any of y'all ask me to do anything, and Neil said, baby, I don't think I want you to do that. Guess what a bitch going to do? I'm going to stay married today. I will see y'all when y'all get back. Yeah. Because I we both learned over the years in working together and having the marriages before and seeing our parents and all of that kind of stuff. This is how we do. We're not telling you this is how you should do. But you know what? If you're going to take a lesson from this, just stay married today. Yeah. Don't promise. I know in your wedding vows you say till death do us part, but don't kill nobody because mm-hmm. it can get that serious. <laughs> yeah. Now we um, and with that we we went in with certain things that we we put all our cards on the table when we first got married. We said this is what I will put up with, and this is what I won't accept. We we had those lines drawn in the sand ahead of time. And neither one of us has crossed them. Mm-hmm. So that that helps that that helps when you know where the boundaries are. You say, okay, I'm I'm close, but I'm not stepping over that line mm-hmm. because the marriage comes first. Because it's like Jason, have you ever had somebody tell you if you love me, you would? No. Have you ever had anybody? And I'm talking about family or anybody, sister <laughs> asking you to do something. If you love me, you would. If you love me, you do this, or if you love me, you do that. No, I mean, you would just do it, right? You would not wait for somebody to say that, right? But when people do that, that was one of the things that Neil had on his list. And in 20 something years together, I have never said, if you love me, you would go cook me some food. If you love me, you'd go to the store for me. If you love me, you stop as, breathing on As they're putting a condition, right? If you love me, then only you can. Yeah, that would not. That's, that's manipulation. Yeah, that's manipulation. Yes. And. That was my. That was one of my lines in the sand. Yeah, that along with fuzzy shit on the toilet seat. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually. I don't, I mean, that's it. No flowers on the bedspread. <laughs> I had to have carpet in the bedroom because I didn't want to get out the bed on the cold floor. 
No one of those fuzzy covers on the toilet seat to make the seat keep falling down. And never say, <laughs> if you love me, you would do this. That was it. I don't care about anything else. Anything else, you baby, I want to do this. Okay. Not a problem. Wait, baby, what I, was on my list? Did I even have one? Uh, if you did, I don't remember. I hope uh, apparently I haven't crossed any of them, so I don't remember. But it's like those were my things, and like I said, outside of that, I I I don't care. I I want you to be happy. If that's what you want to do, I'm here for you, and I do everything in my power to to make that chick happy. That, that is super cool, Neil. Okay, I want to ask you a personal question though. Why does mm-hmm. Phyllis keep referring to you as a media whore? What's the reason behind it? <laughs> <sighs> and now because since you I, have the opportunity, I, I would like to know. Because I am. I I like doing interviews. I like um being in front of the camera. I like I I did some acting for a while. I just you know, when we were promoting our business, we, you know, I was going out, I'd be on different news programs and, and, you know, and promoting the business and stuff like that. I was a spokesman for this company, a spokesman for this company. And I, I was in, I enjoyed the attention. I like being in front of the camera. I also like being behind the camera. Uh, like one of the reasons I like voice acting, um, because I can do what I want to do. I don't have to worry about somebody looking at me. Um, but I can still act and talk and, and, and do those things. And those are things that I enjoy. And anytime something came up for us to promote the business, I was the one who was in front of the camera. Phyllis enjoyed being behind the scenes. I couldn't, it, I struggled to get her to even go with, like we go do a news program and we're, where I'm cooking and showing stuff. I'd want Phyllis to come along and talk about it. She, I had to fight her to even get her to go. She didn't want to be, when I was on barbecue pit masters, she refused to go because she didn't want to be the angry black woman. Uh, <laughs> In the corner. That's right. She, like we did um the great food truck race and Ooh, oh she gosh. got hot on that. Oh my. And they were trying to get her to come be on camera and say why she was mad. I said, don't talk to her. No, Leave you told her, don't touch me because she was about yeah. to tap me on my shoulder. Yeah, I, said, I was like, don't do that. You will draw back a nub. She is hot right now. And I I know when she was really mad. So that was, she didn't, one, she didn't want to be there. Yeah, because the Sunday that we were supposed to go, I told you, baby, we ain't got to do this yet. Yeah. Because they totally flipped the script on us. Yep, and it, and it was a janky production. It that was oh, it was so janky. Um, but the per diem was nice. Yeah, it was <laughs> nice getting paid for it, but it was so bad. Um, but you know, I've done other you know other TV programs and things like that, and it was great. Um, we almost had our own TV show. Um, we did a we shot a, a, a what do they call it a, a pilot, yeah, but. Um, Food Network decided at the last. They didn't want no more fat black people on TV. I guess, <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. so. Oh, we could still have you come in and guest on some. On you could be on some of our contests. I don't want to compete. Mm, they tried to get Neil to do chop. I said y'all will not have my husband running through some kitchen knocking over shit like a bull in a china shop. No, mm-hmm. he will not be doing that show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get on there and they'd want me to be just my luck. They want. Oh, we're gonna. Um, we want you to cook um, chicken and jelly beans and crabgrass. <laughs> some, some some weird. Man, we we'll probably throw the trash in the air and walk off. <laughs> nope, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need this. No. But is it for us? Like I said, and even in this whole creating content together, like for me, because th- like Neil does not. He does not. He said he he listens to me. I have been talking branding and marketing to to Neil since he's been doing his channel. He do, he will do something that I suggest maybe once and he won't do it again because he does not want to put any effort. So one of the, how we ended up with the restaurant and even in the food business in the first place, because I know Neil should have been cooking all along, but I know he wasn't going to put forth the effort because as he's told me over the years, he's a team player. 
he's team supportive. So I have to be part of his team. And so he's not letting me down. He's going to go run the restaurant. The same thing with him promoting his cookbook. The only way he's going to promote his cookbook is, baby, I'm going to need you to ride my ass. And that was one of the things that I did not want showing up on television. I didn't want people seeing me riding my husband's ass like, come on, dude, get your shit together. We got we got to go make this money. And I did not want that to be the portrayal of what it was because I know people will take it out of context. And when I ended up doing um, the great food truck race, woman went, what she do? She came at me with a tweet talking about, oh, she a bitch. And I said, yes, I am. Thank you. I, I just owned it in that moment. But because, like I said, I think Neil wrote a really great Spice book. Banya and Angela, they did the design for it, so it's fucking beautiful. But Neil does not talk about his book enough. So come on, dude, let's go create some content together. But here's the deal. I ain't doing shit. I ain't editing shit. I ain't writing shit. I'm showing up for shit, and that's all I'm going to do. And every once in a while, while we're on camera, I'll hold up his book. Baby, you talk about your book today? That's how I support him. How he supports me in my business when, and I'm, Cass has seen it, Bonnie and Angela has seen it, Charlene has probably seen it as well. Y'all will see Neil come in with a drink, he'll come in with a cigar, he'll bring me my food while I'm I, while I'm doing my thing. Whether I'm on camera or off camera, I got to go feed my wife. He does not expect me to cook. Neil and Morgan are about to take a cruise. I'm staying home with the dog. I said, baby, I might have to go board the dog because I don't know how I'm going to feed him and me because <laughs> Neil cooks <laughs> for the damn dog. <laughs> I'm the mean bitch in the house. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you say something? Shut up, ass. <laughs> <laughs> but the content, uh -huh. yeah, the Good. content is for for him to be able to promote his book mostly. For as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, but what? what so it's, it's I, I just enjoy doing the content, though. I. Ain't, I don't know about you, but I enjoy doing I enjoy being on the mic and talking to you. Because you're a media whore, dude. You already said that. No, I like talking to you. I know, but you can talk to me off the mic. Seriously. Let me let me tell you something. I think what? that that her voice is the most beautiful sound I've ever heard in my life. You her, especially, I'm sorry, her laugh. <laughs> you had to change that from my voice, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sometimes, my voice, sometimes my voice can get on my nerves. <laughs> But I love to hear her laugh. That that just makes oh, my day. God. I love you too, baby. Oh goodness! <laughs> Is there a reason why Neil you don't emphasize much uh, on promoting your stuff? Is there a reason behind that you don't like it, or you just like you just like creating content and that's it? I'm I'm not a promoter. I just um. Would that does that affect uh, your success? And Phil is success. Yes, yes, it does. Okay, how is that? It does. I mean, I, I, I am marketing is not my thing. It's not, and I wish it was because you know I, I we do things like my, even with with the voice acting, I don't market it enough, and I realize that. But it's I. There are times, especially if I'm online, I tend to be brief. Phil says I need to talk more. I need to to say more and I'm very brief. I say what I have to say and generally in a minimal amount of sentences and I'm done. I don't, what else do you want me to say? It's a great book. I talk about spices. I, I, I talk about blending the spice, what each spice tastes like, where it comes from. And it's a great book. You'll love it. There's humor in there. There's a few recipes and I'm done. And sing. And sing. <laughs> yeah and and as far as going for i don't know what else to do marketing is not something i've studied i don't know how to interesting interesting but that's all right you know you you, you can't be great at everything which you do right so maybe uh -huh. you're really good at cooking and uh, just prepping stuff and just yeah. creating content and I, in I, that fashion i like working with audio i like I try to make Phyllis sound good when she's on there. I, I what try you trying to, to say, dude? I heard the pause you, in your voice. That you got that damn echo in there that I always try to fix. Um, I always try to fix her lighting. I want her to look good on camera and stuff like she hates that. And I'm like, get the hell out of my office. So you go in your space and turn on the lights. 
Leave me the hell alone. Let's <laughs> say, you know, I, 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 I really I like want you guys to give out some advice. I'm so sorry, uh, Neil. Please, please finish. No, no, no. I was just saying, I, I like, I like working with the gear and stuff behind it. I like, I like the toys. And I don't give a shit. <laughs> what Hence, do- we gonna stay married today? And he gonna get out <laughs> my office, leave my lights off, and go turn on his own shit. <laughs> what does your daughter have to say uh, when it comes to? two distinctive personalities working together trying to achieve two uh, different kind of goals you know both of you guys want to succeed in what you are pursuing uh, what does your daughter think about how you approach things oh it's cute that you think she actually comes out to the comes out of her room to participate in this <laughs> <laughs> she's a teenager she doesn't she, half the time she doesn't even know we exist <laughs> Mm-mm. She stays in her room and stays out of it. We have to go get her. Neil calls her for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's when she comes out. She comes out to wash up in the morning, and then she goes back into her room. She recently finished high school early, and because we weren't prepared for that, we don't know what the hell to do with her. And most of her friends are online and all of that kind of thing. I want her to start a business, but my family, my my. Neil and Morgan knows I'm a workaholic and I want her to build her. She wants to create a content business, but I won't take the time to work with her like I will with any other client because one, I know she's listening to me as her mom. It's like, oh, she's getting on my nerves. And I actually asked um, Brian Angela to mentor and like have her as an intern because she's an artist. She's a budding artist, but like Angela pointed out to her, it's like, I see everybody else's style. I don't see yours. And so I've been telling her that very same thing for years, but I'm like, yeah, but she needs to hear from someone else. And because she's been homeschooled since fourth grade, um, you know what? You're about to go to college at 16 or by the time she goes, she'll be 17. But it's time for you to get out the house and go learn from somebody else because you're not listening to me and I'm not going to force you. But the other thing is, she's going to go get a job. And I said, I bet you appreciate entrepreneurship once they tell you to get up and get in that funky McDonald's uniform and all that other kind of stuff. Uh-huh. Because you like dragging around the house in your blanket to do your schoolwork. But you can't take your blanket and your whatever else to, to a job. Uh-huh. So we're going to figure out how you're going to do this. And so now it becomes a parenting thing. But like I said, I know I'm a workaholic and I don't invest enough time to do that with my daughter because she is not going to listen to me. Just like no, don't listen to me. Well, she she needs to have some skin in the game. That's why I, what we always say. I always say, um, you can't. Te- it's hard to teach family and friends. Yeah, that is so Good. true. That is so true. I taught I taught swimming for years, and I I've taught people. Uh, children as young as two, and I taught. I had one lad, one lady. She wanted to learn to swim. She was ninety two years old, and I taught. And it was a breeze. But when you try to teach friends or family, they question everything that you try to teach them instead of just accepting it and doing what you're telling them to do. It's like I know how to do this. This is what you need to do. But why? Why? Why can't I do it this way? Why can't I do it? They question you. So it's. At some point, I just back away. I don't, I don't, I try not to do business with friends. Phyllis is different because she can't run away. <laughs> um, Why is that? Why is that? She can't, she has to listen to me. She's going to be, I can follow her around. And, oh my and God. And he does. Y'all, but, there's a chair on the other side of my desk that, and mind you, I don't have any clients coming to the house, but there's a chair on the other side of my desk. Who's sitting in it? Neil and Morgan. I'm in the middle of writing something, doing something. They can plop their asses right there. Neil half the time don't want shit. He's sitting there on his phone watching TikTok and he know I don't like noise. He said, okay, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I just wanted to see you. Like, seriously? And then we're going to come in here and because she's at that teenage mode. And I told her, you know what? I respect the teenage mode because I know at that age, a lot of people don't feel like they're listened to. So I stop whatever I'm doing and I listen to my daughter. Because the thing about when I talk about life, brand, and business, my life never stops. I don't ever stop being a mother. I don't ever stop being a wife. But yeah, because you they, a mother. I'm, you stop it. 
Because <laughs> I know what you're saying. You ain't slick. <laughs> but the the but because they allow me to indulge in that, whenever they ask me to take a pause, I do. If Morgan wants to run in here and tell me about her anime drama, then I listen. She tells me about her friends and her friends. She came into the room the other day because her friend got a 900 and something on her SATs or whatever. So I had to stop what I was doing and I listened. And she wanted to know, what do I tell her? I said, baby, I don't know because I didn't raise you to, to, to you know what, rely on scores. I could give a fuck about a nine something on the score. I, you won't get paid in grades. You're going to get paid in cash. And that's what I worry about because... Mm -hmm. When we when we leave, you can't come calling my husband asking him to come over, Daddy, cook me dinner. No, it don't work like that because now he's my husband. Mm -hmm. Again, I get him all to myself. You left. You got to figure out how you gonna eat. You have to find That's your own right. meal. <laughs> you got to find your own meal. Huh? That's right. <laughs> okay, okay. It, it, was that uh, because of your? Is it because of your business, the restaurant business? You decided to homeschool uh, your daughter. Was was that a part of that? No. That was part of it, um, but mainly F it, a lot of no, it was though. about. Phyllis just said no. Yeah, it was a lot of it was about safety. Um, we just see too many things happening at schools um, that are just out of control, and we were concerned about her safety. Um, we were concerned about things that she was being taught um, that we, you know, we don't we don't always get to see. So um, we wanted to make sure that she was getting a good education, a truthful education. So um, that was part of it. Um, so, and then we um, didn't want to get up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can stay home. You, we're going to start school at 10. <laughs> that's, that's, that's so cool. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My next question uh, is is actually about you know giving people some advice. Couples who who are you know maybe considering or you know trying to get into like a creative venture together, entrepreneurship specifically. It could be any kind of business. What advice would you both would offer those couples? Don't. Um. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Um, it's like we said before. You have to put the marriage first. Whatever, whatever we get into, if it's gonna become a detriment to our marriage, we have to drop it. We have to stop it because the marriage is what's important. We can find other things to do, but if this is putting a strain on our relationship, the marriage comes first. What would you like to add to that, Phyllis? maintain your sanity the and that was that was a, a big thing for us when we were doing when we were working together because if you're going to be in business together you're going to see each other a lot and maintaining sanity sanity so you gotta you gotta learn to separate your who from your do and that's in work and at home um, there was the, you know what, you got to act right. You got to, you got to act right for you and for them. And there's all these different things it, that people don't realize that you need in order to stay married because there's the, how can I put it? The possibility of jealousy is a given. And it, it because sometimes you even get jealous of your own business. It's like, why do you spend so much time with your business, but no time with me? And you don't take time for self because you work together. Now you've got, oh, we got to spend quality time at home. So you never take time for self. Did not y'all hear me when I said Neil and Morgan are going on a cruise, not me. Yeah. Go and away. I love y'all. Let me miss you. Neil don't yeah. never give me a chance to miss him. It's like, man, my plane landed. and he already on the phone. It's like, good Lord, dude, can I get out the car first? But no. <laughs> But it's, it's take it's. But I let you go. But you go. I've never had yeah, a problem with you going anywhere. Yeah, I know when I took Morgan to London and to France and all that stuff. Neil didn't say boo. When I went off to Singapore, I just went on a ten day cruise on the Ritz Carlton and all of this stuff. And Neil did not go with me, and he never told me not to go. Mm -hmm. So there's 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 taking time for self, 
and there's that support system that everybody seems to lack because it's, I don't know why it's hard for people to trust, but y'all, if y'all have problems with male and female friends and all that kind of stuff of the opposite sex or same sex, depending on how you roll, sweetie, it's not necessary because if they was going to cheat, they're going to cheat anyway. Yeah. I done got to the age now. I told Nell, if he gonna cheat on me, just make sure that bitch pay half the bills. <laughs> <laughs> now, I tell her there's no way. Not moving. <laughs> I, tell her, I tell her all the time, there's no way I would cheat. I have enough trouble dealing with one woman. What am I gonna do with two? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't need that much stress in my life. That part. That part. So, but it's like if you're going to go into business with a partner, someone you're sleeping with then you make sure you give yourself space to separate. And I know two folks that work with their partners down below. Vanya and Angela, they work together as graphic designers. Heather works with her husband on art installations and all that kind of stuff. And I'm sure they have their own version of how they stay married. Mm -hmm. And it's it's something because you, like I said, you literally choose your marriage each and every day yeah. because an argument can break out and end all of it because you will say the wrong thing in the wrong moment in the wrong frame of mind. And it is so easy to cross that thing. Cause I promise y'all, I cuss Neil out in my head a lot, a lot. I even had to catch myself on the podcast. I said, fuck you to him. And I never say that not out loud, <laughs> but I said, Oh baby, I'm sorry. We are not going to start this. No. Uh, uh we are not about to start this. I know I get comfortable with my curse words, but we are not about to do this shit. Because if you said fuck you to me, I know it's gonna be some furniture moving. Right. So and you also, <laughs> I mean, one of the things that I, that that Phyllis tells me all the time, and and I think it's necessary. She'll tell me, "Why don't you go play with your friends?" <laughs> Please. Just, just go. And get out the house. And I, I have to, I, it's hard. I have to put her out sometime. Why don't you go somewhere? Go do something. And but that's because Neil think I need friends. You do need some friends. I don't. But anyway, finish telling your version. No, I'm just saying that that you tell me that go, go to, she sent me to the barbecue competitions or just go to a barbecue bash and hang out with people. I, me and Morgan will take off and we will go, you know, piddling around the city or, or finding we'll go out to dinner or whatever it is. And it'll be just me and Morgan, just so Phyllis can have some time by herself. Plus, I don't like to do what they do. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you're a Grinch. I am. I'm, I'm a Grinch and I'm mean and I own it. I don't want to go with y'all. Y'all go to the farmer's market. Y'all go to the carnival. Y'all go do all that daddy daughter shit and leave me at home. If I could send Seymour with you on occasion, I would. It's but really I, I, interesting how you talk to one another. You know, it's it can't really make out whether you're pissed off or really happy. We so, are not pissed off. We are so we used to do this. Um, we used to do we used to have Twitter fights. When we were in the barbecue business together, we used to have Twitter fights. And my mother-in-law used to to watch us go through this Twitter thing, and she would always reach out to us concerned. She's like, Are you guys okay? Dude, the feelings we are fine. We are fine. And and this is why I said people don't whatever your dynamic of your marriage or your relationship, just because people don't understand it doesn't mean you have to explain it. Yeah. If I was pissed off at Neil, trust and believe, I would stop talking. Neil knows how I am. Yeah. I would stop talking. I I'm, I'm through with the interview. You can go ahead and say what the fuck you want to say cuz yeah. I'm going to sit here with my lips shut and when Jason said it's over, it's over. Uh -huh. So is is it's I think it's that level of honesty between us that makes people uncomfortable, but we can laugh about it because it's like, sweetie, we are too old for bullshit. Why are we going to yeah. sit here and pretend? Yeah. We, we, we are very truthful with each other. And we're not malicious about it. No, no. If, if it's, if you ask me, I'm going to tell you. Yep. And, and she's not mad about it. Um, baby, you think I should wear this? No, that don't look mm -hmm, right. Don't on do you. that. Don't do that. And you'll change, and that's it. And I'm the same way. That don't look good on you. Okay, let me find something else. And or uh, whatever it is, you know, it's not. That's we're able to accept that from each other because we know that it's not coming from a, a malicious. Place of, place. 
it's not malicious. It's not from a place of anger uh, mm-hmm. or anything like that. Um, it's just you asked my opinion. I'm a, uh, I mm-hmm. gave it to you. Uh, uh-uh, so. Jason. He tried to ask Morgan because he they, <laughs> because they're going on the cruise. He's mm-hmm. he's shopping for stuff and all of that. And he wanted to take Morgan. I said, don't take my baby shopping. Mm-mm. Neil will buy her something at least one size too big. He he, it, it's like uh, what size was the shirt that you bought her? A four X? No, it was a two X. What that 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 Spider Man one? She uh-huh. said it was a three or four X. She's well, I know it's at least two or three sizes too big. I would not have bought that shirt, but I wasn't there, so I can't say shit. She wanted the shirt. Whatever, and he said she said she wanted to to cinch it or whatever. She she said she was right. going to turn she was going to turn it into a short shirt. And as soon as she's showing her belly, you're going to lose your shit <laughs> because her little breast is going to be hanging out the bottom, and you're going to no, like, that ain't she ain't cutting it that short. Oh hell no. <laughs> 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 nope. Maybe, maybe that's why he bought two X's. So there's more cloth. Whatever, man. <laughs> I wouldn't have bought the damn shirt. I'm the mean mom. I don't even care. No. Nope. She Neil was mad at me last night because she wanted she needed some Roblox. If you play Roblox, then you know she needed the bucks or whatever. So I she come mad at me for you asked me why wouldn't I buy it for her? Ask me I why would I be I didn't ask you, but I didn't ask you in front of her. I asked you. Separately, I was like, "Why didn't you? Why didn't you?" She had her money. She just wanted you to to buy it, and you and didn't I want to said buy no. it. And that was the that was that was the end of it in front of her. I just asked why. Why didn't you? I wanted to know what your reason was. That's all. I didn't need a reason. I wasn't buying them. She just wanted to be mean, mom, and say no. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Jason, are we taking up enough time? <laughs> no, no, that's all right. That's all right. I'm glad because it's interesting, you know, how how couples communicate. And I'm actually hearing this for the first time. Now, me being not married, I can't. Uh, I, you know, it's 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 challenging because I I am not married, so I don't know how it works. Yeah. But looking at you guys, you know, this marriage sounds really fun. You know, provided yeah. you have a good partner, and yeah. if a partner also embraces entrepreneurship and you know they you know if she's a risk taker or he's a risk taker uh-huh. i think that is super super cool you know i think we can do a lot of creative stuff and we can do a create a lot of creative content which is out there right. so yeah. i'm i'm pretty pretty happy that we we did this i want to give people the opportunity if if i know we've been having a uh, conversation left right and center uh, this is the first time I'm doing like a duo interview. So hopefully, you know, you guys embrace what we are. I, I personally feel it was a nice discussion. If anybody listening to this conversation would like to raise their hand and come up, maybe contribute, uh, maybe share your insights on how your relationship is working as entrepreneurs, you know, that would be super cool. So I'm going to uh, quickly take a break. I have a just one announcement and they will continue with the show. I have some interesting rapid fire questions lined up. So... That would be super, super cool. But Neil, again, you have a really sexy voice, my friend. That is super cool. I'm just saying. Okay, thank you. Jason, can I share something yeah, before sure. you? Yeah, sure. Of course. Now, here's the thing. Now, people down below who know me, like Cass and Kevin and Charlene and all that stuff, they all know I don't share Neil freely. So you are one of the few because of, of the podcast that I'm sharing him. I don't share Neil with any and everybody because that's my husband. That's not my, he's not my, technically my business partner. He's my husband first and I respect our marriage. So because this is about us doing something together, if you if somebody as the GCB, GCB doesn't have a husband. She does not. Neil is not married to her. He's mm-hmm. married to Phyllis. And so making sure that distinction is there. Y'all may never see me and Neil in the same room together again unless we're actually doing some business together. I have paid Neil to do voiceover for me, so I will pay him for his services. But it's out of respect for my marriage. So I just wanted to put that to, that little bit in there. And I, I appreciate you sharing that. And I totally, totally respect that. So let's actually take a quick break. And, and before we go to that break, I want to just highlight once again on some of the pointers which you just highlighted before uh, for a successful uh, marriage, especially when you're entrepreneurs. Uh, put your marriage first. Uh, Neil hit the spot. Just one statement. Very simple, straightforward, up to the point. Put your marriage first always. If your marriage is going to be affected because of your business, choose your marriage first. Second, maintain your sanity. As you said, Phyllis, 
always maintain your sanity give yourself space and you don't need to provide explanation about your relationship to anybody so those are like really lovely points which you shared and i really really appreciate that so let's take a quick break All right people I wanted to let you you know make a quick few announcement the first announcement is about become the host contest so uh you know if you're ready to step into the spotlight uh, I'm introducing a contest called become the host where uh, we would be giving you the opportunity to become a star on an upcoming episode of my podcast here it how it works simply submit a short audio clip showcasing your hosting skills and personality get creative let your personality shine share it with me and uh, i'll review the submissions and one lucky winner uh, will be a part of that special op- episode uh, all you have to do is just email uh, me at imjdesignsco@gmail.com and i'm sure uh, i'll reach out to you uh, if i find it really interesting you know give it a shot guys you know there's no uh, uh, there is no it's not like a really huge thing it's just going to help me out and i would get the opportunity to train some of you folks how to do hosting you know so so yeah second announcement which i want to make is that uh, i am recovering from bell's palsy uh, my speech was uh, last last week it was pretty fucked up you know so i've been uh, making uh, i've been doing a lot of nerve exercises voice modulations and those kind of things so gradually i'm getting my podcasting voice back so i appreciate everyone uh, who have sent me dms uh, especially leslie uh, natasha and many others you know who messaged me personally uh, in terms of my health they g- also giving me guidance leslie being one of them sara being another person uh, lovely my sister is also helping me out my mom is helping me out all your prayers uh, are really helping me recover so i appreciate this very very much All right so let's actually get back to our uh, our episode which we are doing. I have some rapid fire questions. Let's have some sound effect. I wanted to play that loud. Let's let me play that loud again. All right so I have some questions which I've been uh, which I wanted to ask you both personally. So I'll start with Neil. Neil, how do you keep Phyllis entertained after all these you- years? You won't have to ask him. He had to run to the bathroom. Like we're all commercial. You know, I say, "Why you put my business out there?" But yeah. So start with me. Start with me. Okay, okay. So let me ask you the question. Okay, Phyllis. Okay. You being the Gato girl, you know, with the whole Gato ga- girl flair. Mm-hmm. How do you manage to keep Neil on his toes and add spice to your marriage? Um it is it is it to maintain the spice i guess is to maintain the intimacy and people think that that's always sexual and it's not um just knowing what neil's love language is which one is food um it's it's that that thing that pleases him most and so as long as i do that and i show up for him in in the way that he likes I don't do the 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 high heels and aprons and shit no more but <laughs> there's still ways that you can you can maintain spiciness just by maintaining intimacy and this could be in it can be in a touch it could be in a look it could be in um whatever you know that they like about you so yeah it's it that level of spice is it's different after 20 years it's not gone it's just different mm, since you brought it up why don't you show up in the apron and high heels anymore Damn it cuz I'm 57 and you didn't see all my tricks you just tell me which ones you want. <laughs> we'll, t- we'll take that offline. Uh, see, don't try me. <laughs> that is lovely. That is lovely. Neil, I'm I, I'm glad you're back from your bathroom break. I was I was I was asking Phyllis, okay, but I want you to answer this question, okay? Okay. What's what's the secret of keeping Phyllis entertained after all these years? Um a lot of it is laughter. I I I try my hardest to keep a smile on her face and I say I love to hear her laugh so I try to keep her laughing. 
that's a that's a real big part of it that is such a lovely answer laughter is the key mm-hmm. reason that's that's how you're doing this that is so cool neil okay mm-hmm. next question to you neil what's the funniest mm-hmm. thing phyllis has ever said to you um yes i'll marry you <laughs> oh my goodness i'm so glad you all were in the other room <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right okay let me ask you phyllis okay could you share like a uh, maybe a moment where Neil's goofiness caught you off guard and made you laugh uncontrollably. Oh god, that's all the damn time. Uh, let's see. Oh my goodness. Probably I probably laugh uncontrollably every time you tell that damn story about I slapped him on the back of the head and told it, told him to lead in two other women along. That I'm telling you. <laughs> I don't know why you keep calling it a story when it's true. Cuz it is. That is so much fiction. Your nose should be sticking through the screen. <laughs> <laughs> But um like I said we laugh so much. If if it's um even like when my father was alive and he would come to visit us, he said he knew he he loved Neil for for always being the one to make me laugh. And he he that's what he appreciated about Neil most. He would he would be downstairs and we'd be upstairs and we would be cracking up laughing and he said neil always kept me happy and he knew that he was the one for me and all that kind of stuff because he did so it's hard to pinpoint something that that one thing that i laugh uncontrollably about cuz i promise you if we start talking about people oh it's going to be some tears some like the laughing tears cuz we can we can just between the two of us we will talk about some people real real bad <laughs> <laughs> it's not something we share it's just between I us i think we share it i said we do it but we yeah we we can get down on folks we see stuff on the internet we're oh laughing especially and, now that we do this whole content thing and we look at other y- young married folks it's like yeah y'all going to have to get out of that bed at some point when they can't fuck no more what you going to do <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's like, come on now. Being married is not all sexy and bells and whistles. Trust and believe. So when y'all going to get up and stop doing the cute shit cuz I'm pretty sure when the camera went off y'all had some words for each other. It was not cute. Right. I don't Whatever, man. It, yeah. You're not you're not going to be hugged up up under each other and climbing in each other's shirt and Is it that just that just ain't going to last. You need no. to be friends. Yeah. Phyllis <laughs> is my best friend. And I, and I'm so glad yeah. friendship uh you know does come first for both yeah. of you uh both of you guys. Uh because that's what's making you know it's fun and so lovely and that's how you enjoy each other's company. uh because yeah. because of that friendship you're open and honest with one another right you you're able to communicate because communication plays a very vital role in any relationship and exactly. and, and and i think you know that's why that's why you're able to have uh you know this comfort level with one another because you're not saying stuff to offend the person you're saying uh stuff uh, because you value one another and you want the best for one another you want oh yeah both of you guys to do good in life right both of you guys to mm-hmm. succeed uh, and be happy healthy and and all that nice mm-hmm. stuff so that is really cool need did was there maybe uh, you know the silliest argument you ever had with phyllis looking back do you laugh or cringe at it now you know let's uh, let's keep the uh, 3xl shirt which you were just referring keep that let's keep that <laughs> argument aside but yeah, was there was anything was, else um looking back yeah what have we really ri- well we've had a couple of not not when morgan was that. 10 and i took her to the park well yeah that and then um the other one when you were leaving oh yeah Yeah, she's a runner. She used I to be anyway. She used to be a runner. And if 
she was the type of person that if she was in a relationship and someone right, she was gone. Oh shit. And, and I mean gone for good. Yep. And somehow, some way, I convinced her that that wasn't how it was gonna be anymore. Interesting, Phyllis. She, she why why run. did you stop? Like, you know, what made you stop and come back? Was Neil convincing enough or no? Um <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> it, it, no, baby, it wasn't it wasn't that you were convincing. It was the the trust and I felt safe and like every time I left someone else, it was from a place of hurt or whatever that was, however it was hurt, whether it was intentional or unintentional. And I never felt safe. But with you, I know that one, I knew I wasn't leaving for good because I always felt safe with you. And that was one of the biggest things of how we have stayed together because you have made me feel safe from day one. You've never judged me when we laugh about how we met and when y'all, he didn't even tell y'all the story about when he, what he asked me when we found out we had been hanging in some of the same place together. <laughs> but, <laughs> Are you going to tell that story or should I? No, you can tell it when I'm done. Okay. But in all of that, he's never judged me for anything. He's never said, baby, don't do this. He's never questioned whether I was always down for him. When when I talk about, I tell people that if soulmates are a thing, when I die, I'm a fine Neil because he is truly my soulmate. I trust him to that depth. And I, I've never, not even with my, my blood family, I've never had that with anyone else. If I got mad right now and said I was leaving for a week, I trust that I can come home. If I leave anybody else like that, I don't have that level of trust. But I don't, it's not that I go out and test, like, is Neil going to let me get away with some shit? But it is that that level of safe haven that he provides for me. It's like, baby, I'm not going nowhere. If you leave, fuck, I'm still going to be here. Are you coming home? Okay, call me when you're coming home. I always know that I can come back. And so when I did leave, and I and mind you, if I was really going to leave, I was going to pack all my shit. So I only packed the overnight bag, so I knew I was bringing my ass back home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so you can tell your story now neil when phyllis and i were finally got around to dating and being out with you know we would go out and we'd go we'd we see places we like, yeah i used to um i used to go to that club she said i used to go to that club too i used to hang out at that restaurant yeah i used to hang out there too um this is my friend i know him and and we were out one day and we ran into a friend of ours frank boyd was his name and i was talking to frank because i played basketball with frank and he we hung out together and did little things and phyllis w saw him and and walked up and hugged him. frank how you doing i said you know frank and she said yeah we went to school together and i thought about all the things that we had in common and I asked her, I said, are you sure we haven't slept together? And she looked me right in the face. She said, I'm not sure. <laughs> that was the point where I knew this is the woman for me. <laughs> she, had that, um, she had that locked and loaded, ready to go. So <laughs> that, was, that was, we just knew we were uh, kindred personalities in that, in that aspect. And we just knew we belonged together. Yeah. We both know we had our whole days. It's like yeah. it just is what it is. Yes. That is so, so cool, Neil. You know, I appreciate you sharing that. And uh -huh. and you know, I, I want to actually you know wrap wrap up today's show. Uh it, it it's really fun talking to Phyllis. And now you know, since I got the opportunity to have this interaction with you, Neil, you're mm -hmm. a really cool person to hang out with. Definitely. You know, I would not be bored for sure chilling out no. with you both for sure having those cigars i think that would be super I cool i definitely enjoyed being here i'm sure phyllis did too um this this has been a lot of fun i enjoy talking to you yeah, yeah. I, don't I, ask me to do this again with you do what I said, don't ask me to do this again with you you know i don't share you know i'm just playing i'm just playing go ahead <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to give you guys uh, the opportunity to promote your business as well so let's start with neil so hospitable mm -hmm. walks is the name name of the website 
uh, you know right. what kind of services do you often need let let my audience know and then we'll go with phyllis well i'm um a voice actor i do audio branding um i focus on uh, the hospitality industry but i do it for anything i always say i i speak food booze and travel um so if you know restaurants uh hotels um companies that 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 do food and and alcohol and things like that i do voiceovers for them whether it's externally you know whether it's on social media or in a commercial or things like that or if it's internally for uh maybe trainings or explainer videos or 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 presentations you know for st- shareholders and stuff like that i do all these type of, of voiceovers for for whatever thing they're doing whether it's a video or if it's uh you know uh um, what do they call it? PowerPoints and things like that. And you know, they need voices, stuff like that. Um, Dude, you old. You just said PowerPoint. <laughs> well, whatever, the, whatever you use for presentations, I don't know. I just talk, and they they, <laughs> they put it over the slides or uh, what do they call it? The, the what do you call it? The pitch deck. Is that your thing? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just I'm just spitting words that I heard Phyllis say. Um, but, <laughs> But I do I do that type of voiceover. I also do uh, things for animation, um, commercials, uh, all type of different voiceovers. Um, but like I said, my main focus, because of what I love, is I, I speak food, booze, and travel. So if somebody wants to hear some of some of my samples, they can look up Hospitable Vox on YouTube, and I have a lot of my samples up there, and they can contact me and we can talk about maybe doing some uh, some work together. Can you pour me a drink when you come in the house? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that need. Phyllis, uh-huh. please share uh, about you as well. You know, services which you offer and how can people reach out to you? Oh my goodness. I'm all about nurturing brand babies and the brand leaders. I am the ghetto country grandmother. I am the head bitch in charge or head grandmother in charge, depending on how you catch me on that day. But I am, <laughs> <laughs> but I believe in expanding and scaling personal brands. I am not the I am my brand type. Don't come at me for that shit. That's not what I'm about. I'm also not here for charging you your worth because I believe that people are priceless. I do believe you need to charge enough for your work. How I do personal branding is not how anyone else does personal branding that I know. Y'all can throw that authentic shit and leave it in 2023 because this is the year of keeping it real. This is not about you being over the top and extra and all the things, but it's about how do you show love to the folks that you actually want to help and finding your voice and your visibility and, and vigilance and all of that hits different. You may do the exact same thing that someone else does, but how you speak about it and how you roll with it, that's what's going to set you apart. People are going to notice you before they notice your business. And that's great. But you got to know that, you know what? I'm endorsing my business. I am not the business. Those are two different things. So that's all I got. Y'all go buy Neil's book, Spice the Variety of Life. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, we, <clears throat> we also have a podcast together. Oh, yeah. It's Our called podcast. Just Trying to Stay Married Today. You can find it on Spotify. Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, and every other major provider of podcasts, you can find us out there. Um, it's also on YouTube. Just look for Just Trying to Stay Married Today. Yeah, and Heather's one of our biggest fans. I appreciate her. She's always sharing it. She's like, I love this show. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is so cool. Yeah. Do you have anything, uh, you know, anything you would want if, if you, if, 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 Spit it out, dude. Spit it out. If, 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 if people can, people can take away f- from this whole conversation. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You okay, Jason? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay. okay. Um, A- any anything oh, you would yeah. want l- listeners to take away from this whole conversation? If you're going, if you're gonna create content together, if you're gonna to be in any kind of business together always put the marriage first that's that's the main thing to take away from this that is so cool phyllis would you like to contrib- contribute anything to that um i'll add 
Well, I didn't contribute no. to me. Just make sure that. you my, my, <clears throat> even though I do put my marriage first, I put me before my marriage because I'm no good to Neil if all I'm doing is pouring out and not doing anything for myself. And Neil lets me do that. So make sure you're taking care of yourselves first before you pour out everything else into everything else. I'm first, Neil second, Morgan's third. That's the order of how I do my relationships. And thankfully, I have a supportive husband that allows that. And it's not from a selfish standpoint. I used to think it was selfish to think of me first. But the reason I don't run anymore is because I know I got to take care of me before I can take care of him. And just so y'all know, I truly appreciate my husband for all that he does. This is just a small sample of how we stay married. But if not for him, I promise you, I would not be the person I am. I wouldn't even be the ghetto country grandmother because he he helped me open that door by being supportive in everything that I do. So I love you, sweetie. I appreciate you. And everybody you. knows it now. Love you too, baby. Stop with that voice. <laughs> 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 that is That is so cool. So... Thank you. Thank you so much, Phyllis, uh, once again, for introducing me to Neil, uh, at least, uh, you know, on audio, virtually on LinkedIn. It's it's mm-hmm. it's really cool. I had such a, a fun time interviewing you both. Uh, n- n- also learning about one another and and how you guys are successfully married. This, this has been really, really cool. I appreciate this very much. I want to let people know that uh, Vanya and angela who is down in the audience i'm going to be interviewing them as as a couple as well i have a future episode lined up uh, i'm also going to interview leslie i think next week so i ha- ha- due to hospital visits and uh, all these things i was not able to create the event ye- yet uh, but i would shortly have that event added up uh, and i'm going to have a fun show with Les- leslie next week so I want to thank each and everybody for, you know, all the 10, 20, 30 or 100 people listening to this conversation. Thank you so much for consistently, uh, you know, following the show. If you have not followed the show, if you go under the event notes, if you're if you're hearing us live, you should be able to find links to support my podcast. Uh, if you also would like to help me out uh, with, with some of the medical expenses I'm encountering because of this, you can buy our merch. Uh, you know, T-shirts, I have a couple of items which I have added. Or you can donate by PayPal. A little bit of support would really help if you could. Okay, otherwise, just follow the podcast. Please continue to stay tuned. Uh, and uh, uh, we will try to bring more and more content about entrepreneurship every week. Thank you so much. Please take care of yourself. And thank you once again, Phyllis and Neil, uh, for, you know, being such incredible guests on my show. And thank you, Leslie, for co-hosting. And I appreciate this very, very much. You think it's all about you. But what about me? Think it's all about you. But ain't nobody really hearing me Sometimes I think it's all just a conspiracy But I'm still living fearlessly Even in this age of tyranny I spit another stanza in the face of propaganda With my face up in the camera Full picture panorama These days things are not what they appear to be Post another selfie on the gram Acting cheerfully Behind closed doors You on all fours Washed up like all shores Distracted by the warlords Infiltrating every corner of your mind Taking up your energy and all your precious time Selling all your data like Cambridge Analytica If you speaking out Then be sure they're gonna finish you Tarnish your whole image and diminish you If you an evil person Then it means you've never you been in it's love all about you. you Well what about me Me. What about me? What about me? You just deprived.
profiteer a narcissist Telling everyone you're marvelous But the opposite is obvious The reason that you're prominent Cause ignorance is dominant Just cause I do not agree Does not mean I'm a communist Building up a movement Like Yugoslavian partisans Top of your whole conglomerate I'm not moderate Think it's all about you That's why we're going extinct Without a moment to blink This is all gonna sink I only got a couple minutes To get it in And yeah, you really led the people Like Flint, Michigan That's the reality we're living in We're getting tired like Michelin Soon it's the streets that we're fishing in You're busy giving gifts to your constituents And still holding ties to all your businesses And separating families from their kids And now the whole world wonders what America is about you 